So this week, we are going to be working with HTML lists. So ordered lists, unordered list, and definition lists. Uh, we're also going to be working with tables. And we'll be looking at styling that is typically used with lists and tables. So there are a couple different chapters you're going to look at. Uh, and the pages deal with uh, lists and tables in the HTML section. And in the CSF, CSS section, they deal with borders. Okay, so we're kind of focusing in on those sections of the book uh, that cover what we are talking about. Uh, then, after reading that, you're going to go into the lecture demo. And we start with covering the different types of HTML lists. And uh, so you're gonna learn how to do an ordered list, which by default is numeric. You'll learn the two different ways of changing the number style. Uh, there is a type attribute where uh, you can add type equals and then give it a lowercase i, lowercase a, you get lowercase letters or Roman numerals. Uh, any of these types will work and it will change the style of the numbering. The other way to change the style is to use the style attribute okay, where you have style equals and then use list style type. And with list style type, you are gonna use lower Roman, lower alpha, upper Roman, upper alpha. Okay, so two different ways to basically get the same effect. And you will notice that I did include links here if you want to uh, kind of play around and try them out. Um, anything that is an ordered list is going to have a specific sequence. Okay, and then for those numbers, you are going to use the li tag. We also have unordered lists. Now this uses the ul tag and each line still has an li tag, okay? but u is unordered, which means you're getting a bulleted list. You can change the bullet style by adding the style attribute and using list style type. So this style equals list style type can be used in ordered lists and unordered lists to change the styling. Uh, so in an ordered list, you are changing, you know, the way the ordered number looks because it can be Roman, alpha, whatever. And in an unordered list, you are changing the way the bullet looks. And it can be a disc, a circle, or a square. Okay, so this little example shows you a square. Uh, there is a link here, so you can kind of go and try these out. And then the final list is a description list. Um, and to me, this is kind of like a, a dictionary. Uh, that's kind of how I think of it because it is really used for terms and definitions. So, uh, or that was the, the thought behind it. So you have an opening DL and a closing DL, and that stands for description list. And then you have a DT tag for a, a term, data term. And then you have a DD tag for a data definition. Okay, and you'll notice that the terms and the definitions kind of go together and the definitions are automatically indented. So does this have to be used for, for only terms and definitions? No, I mean, you could actually use it anytime you wanted a heading with indented text. Okay, it is called a description list. You can also nest your lists. And for a nested list, uh, you're basically, you have a complete list. So you've got your opening and your closing. And then within that, you have another complete list. 
And this one happens to show an ordered list with an unordered list. Okay, so you've got a numeric uh, sequence and then you've got bullets, but it doesn't matter. You can nest any kind of list inside of another list. Uh, one word of warning, the validator does not like nested lists. It will probably give you an error uh, when you have no error at all. <laughs> so um, any error that you get on any type of nested list, um, unless you see a typo, I would ignore it. Okay, so here is a try it live. And I definitely would try these. So this is basically two bulleted lists. So you can kind of see how a bulleted nested list looks. Uh, and you could change this to an ordered list and run it. And you could do a nested ordered list. And you could even change the type on the list. Now let's do Roman. And you could change the type on this. And then just kind of play around and see how it looks. Um, now you might be thinking, well, could I do, you know, another level of nesting? Of course. <laughs> uh, so we could do, we'll do an unordered list. And then we'll do a line. Testing. And let's end the unordered list. And we'll go ahead and run it. Okay, so you can have lots of different uh, levels here. The CSS borders are often used with tables and they're also used with lists. You can apply them to any element. In fact, the examples that I have here are applied to paragraphs. To create borders, there's a couple different ways you can do it. What I normally do is I just use the border command. This one command lets me specify the width, the color, and the style all at the same time. Okay, and so to use this command, uh, it's basically border colon. I give it a size for the width, a color, and a style. Now, those three properties each have their own uh, CSS kind of command. So you can do them separately or you can do border and specify them all at the same time. So I can just do border width, border color, and border style independent, or I can use border. So let me show you. This little example is showing you border style and border width, and there is no color. Now, if I wanted to add border color, I can. Let me run that so you can kind of see how that looks. Now, is this how I would specify a border? No, I never do it this way. I prefer to use border and then I can do all three at once. And it does not matter it, what order you put them in. Okay, so you can do them individually or you can do them all at once. And I do encourage you to kind of play with this um, because the, the border styles, I think there will be some that you end up liking better than others. And so it's just kind of a matter of, you know, learning what you like. Now, in addition to the width, color and style, you can also specify the size of the lines individually, meaning you can specify a width for the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. Uh, you can also turn the borders off by using none. So in this little example, 
Um, I specify the width and the color and the style. And then I turn the border off on the left and on the right. So I've got border left set to none and border right set, set to none. Now, you know, could I have made the widths different than 10? Yeah, if I wanted to, I could. Okay, so there's lots that you can do with borders. Borders are often applied to graphical tables. Uh, especially if you want the table to look like a table. Okay? This table uh, that is displayed has borders. There's a border around the table, and then I have a bottom and a right border on every single cell. Without those borders, it is really hard to tell that this is a table. So the basic table structure, you have an opening and closing table tag, and then within that table, you have rows and they are designated by TR tags. Within the rows, you have to specify columns. Columns are either TH or TD. Okay. And you'll notice I have a little example here. I got two rows and within each row, I got columns. It's really important that you have the same number of columns in each row. So I basically have a row that has headers and a row that has detail. There is no bordering applied. So this is how it looks. People will use tables to align content on their page. Okay? And if they're using it to align content, they don't put borders in. The only time I put borders in is if I actually want it to look like a table. There is an option to add a caption, okay? And by default, the caption would go above the table, but through CSS, there is a style called caption side that you can set to bottom, and that will take the caption and put it on the bottom. HTML also has something called grouping tags. These are something that you will see on the certification exam. Uh, and it kind of mimics what you would have in like a Word document because there is a heading T head tag. There is a body tag called T body. And there is a footer tag called T foot. And so you would take the row that has your heading tags and you'd put that inside of T head. And then all of the rows that have your detail, you would put those inside of T body. And then what you would put inside T foot might be totals like this example or copyright information, okay? Anything that you would normally put in a footer of, uh, of a page or a table would go inside T foot. As far as table formatting goes, um, I already mentioned that the borders are heavily used. Um, other things that are used with tables would be widths. And you can also specify a height. Uh, I don't normally do that. I normally speci specify a width uh, because the default is 100%. Uh, all of the borders that we looked at before can also be applied to tables. Um, if we just put a border on the table type itself, it goes around the outside of the table. To actually get the lines in the cells, then uh, we have to do a little bit more. We actually, on the TD or the TH tags, we have to put borders and you typically will put a right and a bottom or border on those cells in order to see lines. Now, one other thing that is typically done with tables, um, and this is done in the very first row. So in the first row within each column, you can specify a width and that will affect the entire column. 
So if I wanted column one to have a width of 25%, I just specify it in the very first header cell and then the whole column will be 25%, okay? Column two is at 30%, and then column three is gonna be in whatever is left over. Another thing that we do with tables uh, is if we see duplicate content, for example, uh, this little class schedule, both these classes are John Doe's. So instead of displaying John Doe twice, what we want to do is kind of combine the cells into one and just display the name once. You can do this. It's very similar to merging cells in a spreadsheet, but in HTML, it is called row spanning where you have one row that kind of spans or takes over additional rows. You can do the same thing with the column. So for in this example, uh, the very first course is an online class. So there is no room number. So what we wanna do is take this cell and combine it with the room cell. And you can do that by column spanning. Okay. And there is a row span and a call span attribute that you can add to your TD or TH tags that will create this spanning effect. So here is another example. And let's say I wanted to take this first row and have it merge with the two below. So I got one big cell, kind of like this. So row one is gonna take up the space of column one, row two, and column one, row three. How do I do that? So this was the table, the original table. What I'd wanna do in this very first cell is add row span equal three, because I want this row to span three instead of one. Okay, then this is probably the most important thing. <laughs> um, if I tell HTML that this is going to take up the space for this and this, I need to remove the HTML for row two and row three. Otherwise, my table is going to look really strange because it's going to think those cells are there and it's going to push everything down. So you can see over here, I've got row span equal three. And then in the row below it, I took out a TD row. And then you can see I took out a TD section in the row below that. Okay, so now this can truly encompass the next two rows and it's not gonna throw anything off. I can do the same thing with my column span. So if I wanted, these first two columns to merge, okay? Um, I can do that. Here's my original. And then what you have to think with the column span is you're dealing with one row, okay? So over here, I've got call span equal two. So I want this column to take up both spots. So I have to remove the code for column two. I have to remove this row, okay? Column two, row one needs to be deleted, okay? And if I do that, then uh, everything will look fine. If I forget to delete column two, row one, I'm gonna end up with an extra column on the end of the table and it's gonna look strange. And, and the, probably the last thing we're gonna talk about as far as graphical tables is how to vertically align content. And this comes into play when you merge rows. You can actually take the content and move it to the top, the bottom, or the middle. And the CSS you need to do that is vertical-align.
So we've talked about lists, we've talked about graphical tables, and now we're going to talk about how to create a news column in HTML. So you can take any document and split it into columns pretty quickly. There's three different CSS rules that affect columns. The first one is column count, and it indicates how many columns you have. Then we have column gap, which is the space between columns. Column gap can be pixels or percentages. And then if you want the line to display, you have to specify a column rule. And the values that you give that are the exact same as the values we gave the border. So you have to give it a size, you have to give it a style, and you have to give it a color. And then if you put all three of those together and you add them to a class or an ID, you can apply that to your document and get uh, those columns created automatically. So it's a pretty powerful set of commands. In your textbook assignment, you are going to be practicing everything that we talked about today. There are three different web pages that you're going to download. And make sure you right click and save link as. And then get them into that lesson five folder. Uh, for the graphics, you're going to right click and save those into the media folder. And then for the CSS, you are going to right click and save that into the CSS folder. The first four tasks deal with the lemon cream cheese crumb cake recipe. And this is an actual recipe. <laughs> and what you are gonna be doing is converting the paragraphs uh, that have the summary tags to unordered lists. So if we take a look at this, this is what it looks like now. And here's the summary detail tag section. And you can see there are no lists right now, they're just paragraphs. So you're gonna be converting that into a unordered list, okay? And so you can see what that looks like here. This is an example of what it's gonna look like when you're done making those conversions. Then you are going to convert the same instructions into a nested list. And then here is the code for that. Okay, after you create those nested lists, the terms, which are down here at the bottom, those are going to be converted into a description list. Okay, and that list is shown. Okay, once you do all of that, you're going to move on to the next task, which is creating uh, the CSS for the page. And keep in mind that there is some additional CSS after the graphic there. And then finally, uh, at the top, where you've got this prep time, cook time, and total time, these lines need to go into a table. And this is what that table is going to look like when you're done. And here is the HTML for that. Okay, and once you get that part done, you are done with the recipe. Then you're going to move on to the Hitchcock file, and this is a practice with graphical tables. So yes, you are going to have to type all of this in. <laughs> and once you get done, uh, you're going to add all of the styling. Okay, so these, the table styling, at least, you're going to add that table styling. And then to make it look professional, to make it look good, you are going to be doing a lot of row spanning. Uh, almost every row is going to have a row span, except for the very last row. The last row, you're going to need to do a column span. And this is actually showing you exactly what it should look like. 
once you complete the spanning, you're going to go back up to the very first row in the table, which is your row with the headings, and you're going to assign widths. And then this is showing you what the code should look like in the entire page. So this has got the row spans, the column spans, the column widths, and all of the CSS. Your final task uh, involves the third document. And what you're going to be doing to this one is basically taking the main section and converting it into columns. Okay, so that is the assignment. Once you finish that, you are gonna go into the lab assignment. And the first part of this is creating a new page using lists and tables. The content can be whatever you want. You have to have uh, at least one ordered list, one unordered list, and a table. So the recipe is an example of what you could do for this. I also created a little resume as another example. Okay, but if you wanna do something completely different, that is okay. Uh, after you get done with that, you're gonna create a news column. So I have the example here of a poem called The Raven. And if you wanna see how I did this, you can right click and view the page source. You can do this on whatever you want. It does not have to be a poem. Uh, as long as you have the news columns, it is fine. Uh, part three, you're gonna create bulleted lists uh, by converting the paragraphs into ordered lists or actually unordered lists and lines. So this is kind of how it's going to look when you're done. There is a feature in VS Code that will let you do a replace. And so I kind of describe how to use that here. Okay, so you can take uh, anything that begins with a P and an angle break it, bracket and change it to LI and an angle bracket. This will get opening and closing. Okay, then you're going to be adding those links to your assignment page. And once you are done, you're going to transfer everything to the web. So that is all of the required work. Now, what I've also included here uh, is just some information on VS Code extensions. Uh, there are extensions that you can add. And actually, I think I'm looking at Python right now. So let me get out of Python. But the extensions actually will make uh, VS Code a little bit easier to use. Um, do you have to use the extensions? No. Uh, but like I said, they do make it a little bit easier to use. So I have a ton of them uh, applied. So to see where they are, I just switched folders, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Yes, I trust myself. Um, to see what is there, you can click on extensions. And the panel should change and it should show you what extensions you have installed. And then if you want to search for an extension, you can. Okay, but I have quite a few of them. And installing extensions is actually really easy. You just click on install. If you wanna remove one, uh, you go into extensions like I did click on the one you want to remove and you uninstall. So I did include uh, some information on 
different extensions that are popular. So there are videos here that show you how to use these extensions. And then I have documents describing some additional ones. The, uh, the VS Code Marketplace has all of the extensions. VS Code themes are kind of nice because they can you can actually uh, change how your VS Code looks. Okay, so the colors and all of that fun stuff. Um, if you found a really cool extension, you can actually share it with your classmates by going into the discussion and making a post. So that is all we have for this week. Uh, if you run into any problems or if you have questions, please let me know and have an awesome week.